Wagner to present the speaker of this morning, uh, the director of this ministry. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Let's make her feel welcome as she comes. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Well, God bless you. We, we have certainly had a wonderful three weeks. I tell you, when people say, what's camp meeting? Well, you come and camp and meet with God. And, oh, I just feel that glory. I don't know about you. I, I don't think I got to sleep till 3. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I, I think we went to bed drunk and... <laughs> And woke up drunk. We're sort of uh, staying in that condition most of the time. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> oh. When we were singing earlier about the river, you know, after the vision that I had a couple of nights ago of the Lord on the river, maybe it was last night, I don't think I can ever look at the river again like I used to look. How many notice God's changing the way you look at things? Oh, yes, we're not looking at things like we used to. God's giving us, I mean, we just can't look at it and see water only anymore. can only just look and see river. I saw the Lord in the water, on the water, the water. I don't know. <laughs> the explanation is beyond these little English words. But Every time now since I saw that vision, I just, it comes back so wonderfully. And I just see the Lord. See the Lord. <laughs> oh, isn't he causing us to see him in ways we've never seen him? Brother came up to me a moment ago during the offering. He said God healed his hand a moment ago knuckles and joints that hadn't moved in five years, a bone that had been sticking up in the palm of his hand, and uh, it's gone, not visible. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the way the Lord does it. He's doing it. Oh, he's doing it. <laughs> he's doing it. Oh, kasurabia. <laughs> oh, what a glorious day. It is different different. And you know, our problem is, is that when we try to make it the same, I can recall so many times through the years that the glory was so great. I, I can recall times that I would stand up and all I could do was sing the sermon and you kept trying to preach it. You know, you wanted to be normal, or at least a little bit. <laughs> a little normal, but you know, when that glory comes, it's all right to wait on it a little bit. Amen. There's a certain aspect of waiting on the glory and just letting that glory minister unto us. Amen. In times past, we, we know how to stand up and just conduct a service, preach a sermon, sing a song. But there's a difference. There's a difference in this day and hour, and I tell you, it's going to only get more different. <laughs> you say, which direction is the revival going? More difference? <laughs> Oh, yes, and greater glory. <laughs> and that glory is going to bring forth more and more intimate revelation concerning Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah, we're going to know him. Hallelujah. Debbie, I wish you would come. I, want to, I didn't tell you ahead of time because it's good not to forethink anything. 
Uh, I want you to sh share what you remember of the vision the other night on the whirlwinds. Amen. I'm just waiting a minute on the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I saw a golden thing that we only can describe in English when it's a gray thing called a storm. And I saw the it come into our midst. And it was a storm of golden glory. But, of course, there's no turbulence of the storm and destruction as the weather has. And out of this golden storm of glory, there were six whirlwinds that were spawned, not unlike the way tornadoes are spawned out of huge storms. And the Lord began to show me one at a time these whirlwinds. And they were not whirlwinds of tornadoes like we know it, because although they were huge funnels, they didn't suck from the earth and destroy and disperse, but rather they pulled from heaven and they fed unto the earth. And the Lord said that because we had come away with him to the glory, and I know like my own life for everyone in this room, you have laid down things, you've made sacrifices of time and finance and let other things just drop and um, I'm seeing like band concert performances I didn't make it to for Johnny because the glory just magnetized me and it pulled me. And I saw that those that had just been pulled by the glory and you let the things that you would have done just go. I saw these whirlwinds that God had where he was accomplishing these things. And the first whirlwind was a whirlwind of past crossing, that he was gonna cause paths to cross things to happen, people to meet that you couldn't have made to happen. And I saw another whirlwind. It was a whirlwind of marriages and that he would cause again. He said he'd bring her from there and him from here and that he would cause marriages to come to place. And there was another whirlwind. It was of finances. And caught in this whirlwind were all kinds of currencies. And God was saying, I'm going to cause financial situations and finances to be established and made and come to pass for you because you've pulled yourself away from business business transactions and things to come aside for my glory. And another whirlwind was a whirlwind of divine appointments that even where we had sought to, to be in God's way and to make the appointments and don't even have time anymore, that he was causing the telephone to ring. He was causing them to seek us, as it were, for the appointments. And there was another one that was golden opportunities. And I saw them as, as golden opportunities in ministry, Sister Ruth, golden opportunities in life, things that we could never have done for ourselves. And Sister Ruth asked me, she said, how were the paths crossing different from the divine appointments? Because they sound so similar. But see, the paths crossing came when we were in the way that God caused our paths to cross. And the divine appointments were when we didn't even have time to go out there and be away, we just come into worship that he would cause the appointments to be made. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is doing what we have can't do for ourselves, couldn't do for ourselves, but because we've come away in his glory, he's performing it in a much more excellent way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I know, uh, Dr. Where, Dr. BJ, where are you? you I, I knew that it's Dr. BJ in here. I know that she and her husband flew. They were here last weekend and flew back down from New York, I think, this morning to be with us today. And it's just, as you said, people that are sacrificing because they want to be in the glory. <laughs> Oh, the Lord doesn't disappoint us, does he? Hallelujah. Well, Sister Debbie, you, I don't know if you were here for all of Sister Jane's word this morning, but she began to speak about the winds. I'll, I want to read from Ezekiel 1.
Ezekiel 1 verse 4. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. (laughs) I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. And a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof is the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Then he begins to tell his his vision, and it all began with the whirlwind. (laughs) The whirlwind, the cloud, the fire enfolding itself, and he continues to look into The whirlwind. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I want to speak to you a little bit about the whirlwind this morning. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. Every time you hear on the news concerning the winds that are blowing, know that there's not only a natural wind that's blowing, but there's a spiritual wind that's blowing. And that spiritual wind that's blowing is a whirlwind from the Lord that's not unto destruction as we know it. It will cause those things that need to fall from us to fall from us, uh, amen, and destroy the old in order to bring forth the new, uh, amen. And I I, I just sense that God is doing it in such speed uh, as the speed of the whirlwind. God is doing it so very quickly. uh, uh, Just in a moment's time, those things that he's doing uh, by his spirit. Turn with me. Uh, I, I'm not going to go further into the living creatures and the, the vision of the throne of God, but I just want you to see that out of the whirlwind comes the cloud and out of the whirlwind comes the fire and out of the whirlwind. Turn with me to uh, Second Kings. And this is a familiar portion of Scripture, but I want you to see something in a little different capacity than perhaps what you've seen before. Second Kings chapter 2. And I'm reading <clears throat> beginning with verse 9. And it came to pass that when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven and Elisha saw it and he cried my father, my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elisha, of Elijah? Now notice this. We know that when God was getting ready to take Elijah home, he sent him past someone that was in the field with his oxen and cast his mantle upon him. When he went by, Elisha rose up and followed him, and it wasn't necessarily convenient for Elijah. Every time he tried to get rid of him... (laughs) <laughs> he tried, he said, stay here a little while, but he wouldn't do it. 
He had felt something in the passing by. Oh, yes, he had felt a glory that he had never known before. There was something in that, uh, that meeting, that, uh, that uh, appointed meeting that he had, Elijah and Elisha. And even though he was a young one and only a farmer, uh, he wasn't going to let Elijah go. He was going to follow him. And uh, until this time, just before he... Go, uh, is taken away Elijah asks him what he wants and this is when he says that he would like a double portion of what Elijah had now remember this it had taken everything Elijah had within him to live in the realm he was living in I mean what about this upstart <laughs> This young man that wants uh, twice as much as what Elijah has. And Elijah makes the statement, if you see me when I go away. <laughs> Elijah knew that in his departure there was going to be a different realm than he lived in. Amen. He only knew the realm that he himself had lived in on the earth, but he knew that in his departure there was going to be a different realm that would be manifested, and he knew that if Elisha were to see that different realm, he would be able to take a hold of it and live in it. Oh, hallelujah. He said, if you see me, when I'm taken away, uh, oftentimes uh, people preach the sermon that it was a reward for his faithfulness. Oh, no, uh, he had to see it. <laughs> and Elijah knew that that different realm would not be manifested until his departure. And suddenly in his departure, there is a whirlwind that comes from heaven. There is suddenly the horses and the chariots of fire that are manifested. And Elijah is taken away. And the scripture says, Elisha saw it. <laughs> Oh, he not only saw him, he saw that greater manifestation of the glory of God. Now, what I want you to see is this, is that what you see, this is why I encourage people to go out to great ministries. You go out and begin to see what God's doing through people like Brother Benny Hinn and others that are being greatly used of God. It's in the seeing of the manifestation of the glory that suddenly you're able to appropriate it and walk in in it. Amen. There's a, a seeing of it uh, in which you can take a hold of it and apprehend it uh, and it becomes yours. <laughs> there are moments, I don't know, there are moments in a service and you never know exactly when it's going to be. Uh, that God will drop some, some revelation into your spirit uh, that's beyond any revelation you've ever had before. It comes as you're praising and worshiping and suddenly, but that which you see in the realm of the spirit becomes yours uh, and you're able to walk in it from that day forward there is a difference because you've seen it in the realm of the spirit we know that Elisha had exactly twice as many miracles that are recorded as Elijah did he had that double portion anointing that came from on high. Hallelujah. He had twice as many. But I want you to see this. At the end, we will see that this very experience that happened at the end of Elijah's life becomes the trademark of Elisha. Now, here it is. Chapter 2, we just read that, verse uh, uh, 12. Let me read that again. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, 
my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. Turn with me to Second Kings, I believe it's chapter, uh, chapter 13. This is when Elisha is sick. When Elisha is sick and Second uh, Kings 13 verse 14. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died and Joash the king of Israel came down unto him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Oh, it was, became the byword, the descriptive phrase, the name that was given actually concerning Elisha. He had seen Elijah go away in the chariot of fire and seen the horsemen thereof, and he began to move in that very realm. What was formerly only in the heavens began to be the natural thing that was happening round about him. It was seen in some of his miracles, this very whirlwind of the Lord that begins to describe Elisha and his ministry. Now God wants you to take a hold of the greater this day. Amen. He has said there's a whirlwind of God that's moving in your life and some of us do not have the years to wait as others because of the shortness of the time before the coming of the Lord. But God wants to do that speedy work. And even as Brother Jones ministered last night, uh, he wants to change us uh, into another person. Oh, just in a brief period of time, some in a moment's time, some uh, in, in perhaps a 24-hour period of time, some in a very short time. We watched, we had this lovely Catholic couple that came, I believe they came the first week of camp and stayed a, a good part of it, uh, went back to uh, Rochester, New York, where they're from, came back this past week. I think he spent more time on the floor than he did in the chair. But I watched his countenance changing. I would say, I don't know if they were here maybe... I didn't count the days, but let's say maybe 10 days altogether at the most. But I, that man was a brand new man when they left this morning. Brand new man. He's got to go back to work. Head of a golf course up there in Rochester. Ready to quit his job and come down and help us here at the camp. The glory. We watch the transformation. Now, the face only shows what's taking place on the inside. Oh, yes, there's a whirlwind from the Lord that's moving in all of the earth in this day and hour, this great whirlwind of the Spirit of God. And you have got to allow it to happen within you. Stop clinging to everything that you can cling to and hold on to. <laughs> Years ago in Hong Kong, we often had these mudslides with boulders that came down the side of the hill. And uh, this one boulder came down and hit a building and two missionary friends of mine were staying in the building. They were sort of given a couple minutes to evacuate the building because they said any time the, the building could begin to move. She had just earlier that day made a wonderful lemon meringue pie, which was in the refrigerator. When she got outside, the one thing she had run to get was the lemon meringue pie. <laughs> of all of the treasures in the house, she was standing outside with the boulder coming down on the house with the lemon meringue pie. 
that was uppermost in her mind. And that's what she came out with. Well, some of us are just about as, <laughs> as foolish. Amen. When God is working great changes, we're holding on for dear life to this and that and the other. But he's saying not only let the river flow, but let the winds blow. Amen. Let the winds blow. Let the whirlwind blow upon us. Let the whirlwind lift us. In the currents of that wind lift us into a higher realm. Let it lift us beyond our thinking of the moment and let us move into those realms of glory beyond anything that we have experienced before and let us be those who are carried away. I'm sure many of you saw this past week at one of the storms, I'm not sure if it was Florida or California because I, I think it was Florida. I think it was a, a baby, was it 18 months old that was blown away in the wind? Oh, I loved the fact of <laughs> the way the Lord does it. Imagine, the Lord had that baby just wrapped in a mattress, cradled in, a, in the limbs of the tree, and nothing wrong with it. Hallelujah. Just wrapped the baby in a mattress, had it up in the tree until folks could come and get him. That protection of the Lord. If he can do that for the baby, do you think he's going to do anything less for you in these times of change? Oh, no. He's working the glorious thing. Hallelujah. Sister Jane saw that golden storm this morning. Can't hardly. Well, it's a golden whirlwind. It's a whirlwind from the Lord. Ezekiel saw it. He said it was a, a behold, a whirlwind and a cloud. And then he saw not only the whirlwind and the cloud, but he saw he saw this fire that was enfolding itself and a brightness was about it and out of the midst of it came this color of amber and came this, uh, the, out of the fire came forth the likeness of the creatures and if you continue to, to read on down toward the end of the chapter, out of it all he sees the very throne of God and he sees the likeness of one who is seated upon the throne. This chapter is one of the most descriptive chapters of the throne of God that shows us it's moving in its authority in all of the earth. A throne that has wheels. Amen. A throne that has a wheel within a wheel that's turning and coming forth in this day and hour by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. He continued to look in to see. Now, God is teaching us how to look in further into that which he is revealing unto us. If we begin to see, let's not just say, oh, I saw. Let's say I saw the, the whirlwind continue to look in and see what's in the whirlwind, continue to look in, and see what's in the cloud, continue to look in, see what's in the fire. Out of it he begins to see the living creatures, these heavenly beings that uphold the very throne of God, these beings that are under the very throne of God. We know that they uphold it, because he says that over the heads of the creatures there was a firmament and upon that firmament was the throne of God. But there under the very firmament upholding the very throne of God. I think one of the things that I was so blessed with as a child was Knowing that revelatory realm in the services. Now, I wish I could remember the great revelations that came forth in the revival of the 50s. 
I, I don't remember them. I did receive the Holy Spirit when I was nine, but in 1949, but I was so young. But there were aspects of the way that flow that came forth that I'm still waiting for in our services. Oh, yes. God has blessed us and we have wonderful revelation and we have as fine a prophetic flow as I know most anywhere in the world, but it's still not yet like it was in the revival of the 50s. And one of the things that's so good is when that flow comes into a service, and one begins to see this part of the revelation and the other begins to see that part uh, and out of the revel out of the whirlwind we begin uh, to behold greater things and we uh, with the with the seeing there comes a release uh, of, of the voice and we begin to tell uh, and folks that would normally be fearful to say anything publicly suddenly they become the babes and sucklings uh, through whom the great revelation of God are coming to the people of God. People are hungry to see the Lord. And God in his faithfulness is anointing our eyes to see. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> He's anointing our eyes to see. He's doing that for us. Brother Justice and his wife have just come back from South Africa and last week when they were here, he came on the platform and he said, Sister Ruth, we saw our, I'm not sure now if it was a grandson or granddaughter, but he said, he said the, the little grandchild got up in the morning and said, Grandpa, I was standing in a cloud, but my head was above the cloud, and I knew I was standing in the cloud of glory. When you see children that begin to come into that revelatory realm of the Spirit of God, I have watched through the years as people who had absolutely no understanding of spiritual things, in a moment they were saved and filled with the Spirit and began to declare such glorious revelations of the Lord, you would think they were John on the Isle of Patmos. And of course, in so many of these times, we didn't have tape recorders to get them down for posterity, and we've all, all tried to remember. I recall the outpouring that we had with the young people in Hong Kong, and one night, 60 young people were filled with the Holy Spirit out on the floor, and they had never seen anybody on the floor under the power of God. One of the Chinese brothers was running around with, with uh, cups of tea trying to revive them. And we were busy trying to keep him from reviving them uh, with cups of tea. But these young people began to have such wonderful visions of the Lord. They had not yet even heard a great sermon on Calvary, but they began to describe the sufferings of the cross and the whole story of the passion of Jesus Christ in such a way that those of us who were standing nearby stood by in awe and amazement. Saturday night after Saturday night, we were amazed as they fell out under the power of God and visions of God began began to flow even as visions of God flowed in the life of Ezekiel. That is what God is doing in this day and hour. He wants the revival to have greater and greater depth and greater and greater height that as he is working, that he is teaching by his spirit those things that quicken the hearts of people in such a way that their longings for the eternal are so great that they can never get away from it. 
greater. It's not philosophy nor teaching, but it's that life-giving flow of the Spirit of God. And God not only speaks by his voice, but he speaks by visions of God. And he's bringing us into that realm where we see. I remember that time that we were with we were in Caros, just outside of Nice, France. And I'd met a couple of producers down at, the, down at the airport and invited them to stop by our little village, little wonderful medieval village in Caros. And I was surprised that a couple of days later they showed up. And I knew that if we tried to talk about God we would have an instant argument. One was a Muslim part of the Persian royal family. One was a Jew, a, a declared atheist from New Jersey. The third was a, a pseudo-Christian from Holland. But I said, would you mind if we prayed? And Larry, the atheist, who had done everything. I mean, he was going down every day to be with Harold Robbins, the novelist and the scriptwriter. And he thought, you know, he had done everything, and I should, he was a little insulted that I should even ask if it would be all right to pray. He was willing to do anything. And when we started to pray in a moment's time, the glory of God descended. And in a moment's time, visions of God began to come. And in a moment's time, they not only all three were saved, but all speaking in other tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I heard, and the first one was the Muslim. I believe if there was, you know, a moment before, I don't know how the next sequence was, but in, a, in, in just moments. And I heard the Dutchman saying, you really are the son of God. <laughs> we didn't have to talk to him about it. That vision of God came to him. He said, you really are the son of God and he began to describe what he was seeing on the cross seeing Christ on the cross dying for him oh in a moment's time it was beyond just his thinking in a moment's time he knew Larry went over picked up a piece of paper after some time and later he read me what he had written this is the Jewish atheist. These are all three movie producers and script writers. And he wrote you something to this effect. You are not a God that is far off, whose distance can be measured by inches and miles, but you're a God that's so near that all we have to do is reach out and embrace you. <laughs> that doesn't sound like an atheist. That sounds like the spirit of revelation. Oh, hallelujah. He comes by revelation and we're going to see the whirlwind of God coming to our relatives, coming to our friends, coming to our business associates, coming to our pastors in ways that they're going to be willing to lay down the old and move into the new. Yes, it was interesting because the Dutchman began to put the scripture into poetic form. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. He was writing the whole scripture and putting it into poetic form from that experience of the revelation of God in his life in our little house in Caros. He wants the whirlwind to be not only that which we glimpse, 
but he wants it to become our trademark. As was with Elijah, he didn't know it until he went away. There are things you and I know today that grandmother would have longed to know. She was blessed. 1908, baptized in the Holy Ghost down in Alabama. Traveled across America and took, that's why mother's born in Los Angeles because they went out to see Azusa Street to see if revival was still continuing. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. But there are things, there are things that they perceive that you and I can live in. There are things that they glimpsed that you and I can live in because with every generation there is an increase. Amen. There is an increase if we will take a hold of it. There is an increase for every generation. I'm blessed <coughs> to have had a godly heritage. We not only have, have this, but we have a, a godly heritage that goes back to Jonathan Edwards in which there's a preacher at least in every generation. But with every generation, God wants a greater revelation. Oh, yes. He wants a greater revelation to come. The height of what they died in. You and I should take and be able to walk in every day. There is that realm of the whirlwind of God that we should be able to take and make our own and let it be even a trademark. We knew the glory in the revival. In fact, I remember we had church every night for five years and we never invited a speaker. Never called up and invited any preacher to come and preach, but we had the best that were flowing in that day. God just brought them right to our place. Oh, how blessed we were, what a flow. But we didn't know how necessarily to make it happen again. But God has taught us uh, as we've lived in Jerusalem the simplicity of it uh, that if we praise until the spirit of worship comes uh, and worship until the glory comes uh, that we can stand in that glory. Recently when I was down at Brownsville for the ladies convention I saw a newspaper that was writing about it and, and the sister says, Sister Ruth should not say that we should stand in the glory. Her line should be, we should lie in the glory because of all the women that were stretched out prostrate before the Lord. I think one of the reasons that God gave me that term, stand in the glory, one is because of being in Israel where the people stand at the Western Wall. We stand more there in, in his presence. It's, but also this, I believe if we fall out enough in his glory, our bodies are going to be tempered to it and we'll be able to stand to minister in it. Amen. We cannot minister to others in the glory if we only know it as we're on the floor, amen? And God will temper the body so that these bodies can be tempered, that you can contain the glory more and more, oh, greater glory than you ever have been tempered in before, amen. Some of you might feel concerned you don't fall out quite so easily. Well, because you're ministering 
And when you're ministering, that glory comes so that you can stand and minister in the glory. The glory is present, but you've learned to stand in it in order that you can minister in a higher realm than what you used to fall out in. Amen. Does this mean we won't fall out? No. We need. We need to. <laughs> oh, we need to lie down in green pastures. Yes, we do. We need to. We need to lie down in green pastures beside still waters and know the shepherd in ways that we've never known the shepherd before. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think that what I appreciate so much about revival, now this is an addition to people getting saved. You know that at that, that's foremost. But that God is so wonderfully revealing himself to all of us. It delights me that the humblest believer has revelations that prophets and apostles long to see. It delights me that ordinary folks like you and me, hallelujah, can be carried away into this glory. And you know the Lord always prepares us the night that he called me to go to Israel, I had had that great visitation of the living creatures. This Ezekiel 1. This is why it became a favorite chapter of mine. And I didn't realize until we had lived in Israel some time that Ezekiel 1 is considered the highest thing in Judaism. In fact, they are not even allowed to study it until they're 40 years old, until they know the, know the, the Torah, the, the law and the prophets, when they know it so well, and they're so established in that, then they can begin to study Ezekiel 1. And you know, these Jewish rabbis, they're brilliant. I mean, when you speak about ancient languages, you're not, with them, you're not just talking about Hebrew. They'll, they know every one of the early originals. Not the ones that we even consider. They know all of the others. And besides, they're usually fluent in at least five modern day languages. Brilliant men that have looked over the jots and the tittles and can tell you every nuance on every word. Well, how would a person like me from Ashland, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, how would I speak to somebody like that? Only by revelation. <laughs> you couldn't do it otherwise. And when a few years ago they began to hear word that there was somebody in Jerusalem that had had an experience of Ezekiel 1. One of our sisters came and said, Sister Ruth, I want you to go over that couple of those verses in that chapter with me again. She said, I've been started teaching some of the rabbis. Now, when they study, they only go back to what Rabbi so-and-so said in the 15th century or the 16th or the, mostly the 14th and 15th centuries. But they don't have anything up to date concerning Ezekiel 1. She said, they said to me, who is this that's taught you? Oh, she says a friend. She didn't say a Christian friend. They said, there's no rabbi in the world today that knows that information on Ezekiel 1. But the Lord did it before I went over there so that I would never be intimidated 
by their brilliance nor their knowledge because I had had a visitation in my room. It was a whirlwind that came into my room in which suddenly I saw those living creatures. And you know what's happening now in Israel? This group of rabbis are now beginning to be caught away. And they too were seeing the, the throne of God. When I was home in Jerusalem in January, every day at our prayer meeting, we had five or six top Jewish leaders from five or six different important groups in the city that came to praise and worship with us. Oh, their hunger for the things of God. Some of you have heard that there are many rabbis that now know Jesus, are filled with the Spirit, are praying for the sick. The number outside of the Messianic, the official Messianic movement, the number outside of the official Messianic movement is greater than the number in the official movement and they're all hidden people. One of our brothers alone had experiences with about 500 uh, and we try to keep that a little secret uh, because we want to stay in the country. What God is doing, how? By the spirit of revelation. Oh yes, the whirlwind of the Lord that comes uh, into our lives uh, and in a moment's time something I, I love to sit in a service when the spirit of revelation is working brother Jones last night went over and I believe he was prophesying over brother David Clark and he began to prophesy concerning having been abased and having been lifted up and instantly I had an understanding I never had had before. I knew that in the realm of the spirit, they both become even territory because the prophet Isaiah said he would take the valley and lift it up and he would take the mountain and bring it down and that we would walk in an even place and I knew that in the days to come we wouldn't even consider the difference in the valley and the mountain that we would know that we were all walking on the way of the Lord that they were equal in his sight oh yes in a moment's time the revelatory realm of the spirit comes and teaches us things we've never known before Who's going to be our teacher? The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He wants to be our teacher. He wants to teach us. And in this realm of glory, there'll never be a night that you leave the service without understanding something you never understood before, without perceiving God in a way that you've never perceived him before. These are days of enrichment. Amen. Hallelujah, enrichment, those things that he's revealing unto us by his spirit. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Jesus said concerning the spirit of God, he said, he shall take the things of mine and shall show them plainly unto you. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Oh, yes, plainly. Hallelujah. Not so complicated that you need three lessons. Oh, no. Not so complicated that you need to come back for more. In a moment's time, you know as if you've always known. Amen. God drops that knowing into your spirit. And you say, <laughs> to be so blessed that we can be partakers of the heavenly vision. Partakers of this knowledge that he's bringing forth in this day and hour. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Oh, let the river flow. Let the winds blow. Let the cloud come. <laughs> let it come. Let it come. Let the cloud be visible. And out of the cloud, let us see the fire of God. Let us see those things that he desires to reveal unto us oh hallelujah he is revealing his glory unto us praise the Lord the last thing that is read on the morning of Shavuot which is the last uh, 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 Shavuot which is the beginning of Pentecost the 50th day the last scripture that is actually read is Ezekiel 1. They read Ezekiel 1, and so I want to go directly from Ezekiel 1 to Acts 2 that we all can quote by memory. <laughs> oh, yes, Acts 2. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come and move in power. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. This is the whirlwind of the Lord. Hallelujah. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance oh yes the whirlwind <laughs> the whirlwind and I'm sure the cloud was there too and the fire they saw the fire they saw it sitting on their heads and permeating their beings and a release of the river began to flow forth hallelujah praise the Lord what a day and hour you and I are living in. Hallelujah. I know that you're hungry for God. Don't ever feel frustrated with your hunger. Don't feel exasperated. Hallelujah. Sometimes one more course is the one that revelation dawns in. Oh, yes, it is. One more. <laughs> Hallelujah is the one that suddenly uh, that new revelation dawns in. Uh, suddenly you move into a realm that you've never moved in. I don't know. I, I, I think we're going from glory to glory to glory. I had an interesting vision the other day. I was praying. Brother Paul Adams was here. And... Uh, he came over to the house to talk to me about several things. And <clears throat> before he left, I prayed for him and I saw he had been, he had had an experience up at Mount Ebo in Jordan. He was in Jordan uh, or just before Christmas and he was up at Mount Ebo where, of course, Moses viewed the Holy Land. And he had had such an amazing experience while he was there. And I suddenly saw that that experience he had had, that experience that he had, I saw it was like a, a circle of Mount Ebo that was under his, uh, Mount Nebo that was under his feet wherever he went that he didn't need to stand again on Mount Nebo. He had had the experience. You know, God, God says these things in such a way to impress upon us what he has done within us. Because sometimes if we're not careful, we think that it is an experience of that moment and that place. And we only relegate it to there. 
But I saw that with him and under his feet was like a circle that he had stood in on, on Mount Nebo that was under his feet, but wherever he went, there would be that revelatory realm that he had experienced there. Hallelujah. When you stand in certain realms of the Spirit of God, amen, it's not a one-time only experience. You take the very place of your standing, that place that was in the heavenly, that place that you stood in at that moment when you saw the whirlwind, that place you stood in in the moment when you saw the Lord, that place that you stood in in that moment and when you which you saw the angelic beings, that very place of standing you can stand in wherever you go in that authority of the revelation, that revelatory realm of the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. He delights to reveal himself unto us. Every child of God should see and hear and know the things that are eternal beyond that which we have experienced even to this time. I don't know about you, but I believe our greater days are just ahead. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. I believe that in services we're going to have people that are going to see uh, the heavens open and are going to declare the heavenly the Lord said this morning there would be uh, eternal songs and eternal sounds uh, that would be brought forth, uh, that he was going to do it with such ease. And this is the direction uh, that the revival is yet to go in, but we're going to see uh, it happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, for I have much to teach thee, saith the Lord. And so very much that I desire to reveal unto thee, I shall reveal it unto thee by my spirit. <laughs> For doth not my spirit search out all things, yea, even the deep things of God? And shall I not cause thee to see visions of God, saith the Lord? For yea, thine heart is hungry, and I shall satisfy the deep longings that are within thee. Thou shalt be greatly satisfied, and thy life shall take on new directions, yea, more glorious dimensions than ever before, saith the Lord. Yea, great enlargements beyond anything that you've ever experienced. I shall do it for thee with ease saith the Lord with great ease shall I do it thou shalt be amazed at what I shall do and how I shall do it yea I shall teach thee how to yield to me I shall teach thee how to be lifted up and thou shalt be lifted up into my presence before my throne again and again and again saith the Lord with such ease shall I do it. Thou shalt be amazed. Thou shalt be delighted. Thou shalt be enlarged. Thou shalt be increased. And it shall be truly the increase of God within thy life, saith the Lord. O oh, tiki amandai. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's just gather here at the front. Oh, Yarabanda. Hallelujah. There's a wheel within the wheel, and it's turning in me. It's turning. Within the wheel, and it's turning in me. It's turning in the glory. There's a fire within the fire, and it's burning in me. It's burning. There's 
it's a fire within the fire and it's burning in me it's burning in the glory i can see i can see i can see Within the wheel and it's turn, let it turn, it's turning in me. There's a wheel within the wheel. Within the fire, and it's burning in. Decree it. Oh, yes, it's burning in me. There's a fire within the fire.
sing the Lord. As John saw him with the seven stars in his hand. I want every pastor here today to know that you are in the hand of the Lord. This is a special day and hour for pastors. Pastors who have felt alone, felt rejected, felt buffeted by the congregation, felt pressures from the board. This is your day. This is a day that John saw in which pastors are going to be raised up as stars in the hand of the Lord. There's going to be such a brightness that's going to come into your life. You're going to be the shining star. Oh, yes, you are. Uh, hallelujah. There's an anointing and a brightness uh, that's coming into the lives of pastors uh, in this day and hour. Oh, yes. Uh, not just pastors, but those uh, who are in ministry, no matter what your title is, uh, He's got you in his hand. You're right there. <laughs> and he's going not only, you know, with these stars, he's, he's wanting to show them. This is the day he's going to elevate pastors in such a way they're going to be seen because it's going to be the Lord's delight to reveal them. Amen. Oh, yes, it is. Hallelujah. He didn't have them hidden in his hand. He had those stars in his hand so that they could be very, very visible. <laughs> oh, yes, pastors, receive it. Receive the encouragement from the Lord. Know that it's your time of being lifted up. This is your day and hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're going to be his star and be visible. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I can see. I can see. I can see the glory. I can see the glory. pastors because I see the shepherd holding lambs and this is lambing time <laughs> this is lambing season oh yes you've been busy taking care of the sheep but I tell you this is lambing time. You're going to see the little lambs coming in. Hallelujah. They're going to need a lot of care, a lot of nurture, a whole lot of tenderness. But you're going to be so busy with lambs. When people call you up and want you to do this and that, say, I'd like to come. I'd like to do it. But I've got a lamb problem. Amen. I've got lambs I've got to take care of. I've got little ones to look after. Oh, hallelujah. And some of these lambs might be Wall Street brokers. Or they might be some very important people. But when you look at them, pastors, don't look at them as important people. Because you'll take care of them differently if you do that. See them as lambs. Oh, little lambs that need to be nurtured. Little lambs that need to be fed. Little lambs that need to be taught, need to be guided. Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh you are. Yeah. people here today that feel that God has called you as watchmen on the wall and I'm seeing that you're standing on the top of the wall and seemingly you're the only watchman and you're feeling very alone in your situation but I see suddenly the walls begin to fill up Oh, yes, there are watchmen, many watchmen uh, that are coming forth on the walls. Uh, God's adding to the rank of the watchmen. Oh, yes, he is. Uh, he's adding to the rank of the watchmen. Uh, hallelujah. You're not going to feel alone. In fact, you're going to have somebody call you up and say, uh, can we watch together? Uh, amen. Uh, hallelujah. You're going to have a whole new circle of friends. Uh, you're going to have whole new situations. Uh, in which others are going to be joined to you in the work of watching over the things that God has committed into your hand. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm seeing this, that God is putting you there in such a position that there are times that you feel like Nehemiah of old, when they were building the wall and they said we can't come down we're busy on the wall we can't come down certain things that you can't come down to I see God just lifting it up to you where you are there's certain provision and certain giftings that God's going to bring to you right where you are you're not going to have to go out and search for it because God is going to do it for you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, what a glorious day. 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 I can see, I can see, I can see the glory, I can see the glory, see the glory, I can see, I can see, I can see the glory, I can see. something while we were worshiping today or in the service at any time you saw. Amen. Amen. How many are seeing more than you used to see? Isn't that wonderful? Yes. God's doing it for us. You continue to believe to see throughout the day.